Bible says we are created in God's image. If it is true, then we should serve the Lord with gladness. We should use our talents in worship and care for our children and youth. We should bless our neighbors and make disciples from all nations. We should share the light of Jesus' love like a city set on a hill. At Third Baptist Church, we support the arts. We treat people like family, and we see our city as beautiful. Welcome to Third Baptist Church. You are a treasured part of the family of God. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Third Baptist. It is a truth generally acknowledged that Pastor Tommy has an unhealthy love for Amazing Grace. It's his absolute favorite hymn, and I suggest that it's probably a lot of your favorite hymn as well. So today, is Amazing Grace Sunday, in which just about everything we do has Amazing Grace in it. So I hope that that will secure my contract for another year. <laughs> Six months. So um, I thought it would be interesting to look into a little of the history of Amazing Grace. So your bulletin has something for you to really think about, because when we you get to the hymn of affirmation, there's quite a lengthy explanation of, about how Amazing Grace came to be written. And here's a disclaimer. There are six verses in the bulletin. They are not the verses we will be singing. We will sing the version in our hymnal. I just thought you'd find it interesting to see what John Newton wrote originally. And after the first verse, it's not the same as our hymnal. And the sequence of the verses is different as well. So please, when you get to the hymn of affirmation, use your hymnals. But take this away and think about what Newton was actually trying to say. And a subtitle for this service is about thinking. It's one thing to hear scripture and hear the words. It's another thing to actually think about it. Thinking is underrated these days. We all want sensations, but we don't think about things. We don't reflect enough. But this congregation revels in words, and words are the means for you to ponder, reflect, and think. And so when we get to the anthem, we have a really very clever combination of the two songs, Amazing Grace, and Walt Harris think about your think about his love and I will just finish by saying that this the choir has done a wonderful job learning this new piece by Mary MacDonald and it really does show you their wonderful flexibility that just a few weeks ago they were singing a highlight of English Victorian church music for Easter morning blessed be the God and Father and now here they are singing uh, a contemporary Christian chorus by Walt uh, Harra, who, of course, as you notice in the bulletin, is actually from St. Louis. So, without further ado, I'll ask Brent to begin our worship with Harold Stover's meditation on his own anthem, Lord, Speak to Us That We May Speak.
Good morning. Welcome to Third. Uh, last week, Pastor Tommy uh, was preaching about um, Jesus' mother and brothers coming to wanted to talk to him while he was inside a house. And um, and you remember what he said? He said, uh, "Anybody that does the will of God is my mother, my brother, is my sister." And um, well, that was bad news for his mom, and he probably got a talking to. Uh, that was good news for us, right? Um, God has been, God revealed himself as a father. Jesus said uh, he's not ashamed to be our brother, and uh, he's creating a family of God, a new family. Um, so he, he commands us to love our neighbors as family, to love uh, the foreigner as family, uh, to love even our enemies as family. And so I want you to greet one another as brothers and sisters this morning in the name of Christ. So uh, let's stand. If you're online, we welcome you. Send us a word in the chat. Uh, let's stand and sing the, we're gonna sing this first, right? Oh, sing this after. Okay. Okay, so stand, let's stand and greet one another as brothers and sisters.
now take a poem by A. E. Houseman titled Istahen. If in that Syrian garden ages slain you sleep, and know not you are dead in vain, nor even in dreams behold how dark and bright a sense in smoke and fire by day and night, the hate you died to quench and could but fame, fan, sleep well and see no morning, son of man. But if the grave rent and the stone rolled by, at the right hand of majesty on high you sit, and sit and so remember yet your tears, your agony and bloody sweat, your cross and passion and the life you gave, bow hither out of heaven and see and say. For those of you who have the pleasure of knowing Dawn Phillips, she is a person with a big heart. When she speaks and when she writes, she writes with a big heart. <clears throat> I am here to read to you her offertory prayer that she wrote for us this morning. I hope that I am able to convey her message to you because it comes straight from her heart. Father of hope, Prince of peace, spirit of change, we offer ourselves to you this morning as instruments of your peace. We are a mess. We have chosen hard-headed disobedience to your instructions 
which has resulted in anguish, terror, horror, violence, strife, oppression, and destitution. Far too many people are starving and homeless, <clears throat> gutted by physical and mental illness, spiraling in spiritual deserts. Liberate us from the pointless exercise of mediocrity and guilt and blame. Accept our monetary ties and offerings to create physical security. Use the offerings of our time and friendship to multiply fruitful productivity. Silence our screaming anxiety and lead us to sacrifice ourselves to you and your work. Father, we confess we can't even come within a whisker of seeing a future of peace. Show us the radical possibilities of your love. Restore a new kind of shalom. Lead all us exiles home to you. Enfold us in your peace. Over us to shelter, under us to support, around us to protect, always directing us. The peace of all peace be upon all creation. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please read in response with me. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. Because he turned his ear to me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. The Lord protects the unwary. I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. Thank you. 
morning. morning. Join me in reading today's scripture, 1 John 1, 1. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. at a house church in Ephesus. One of the children in the house church turns to their mom and says, who is that old man? And the old man stands in front of the congregation and the mom says, that, that is the Apostle John. He is the last of the apostles. He was the last person standing among all those that Jesus called. Imagine John beginning to speak to this congregation in Ephesus. And he says this. I can tell you a whole lot about my life about my strained relationships with my father when I left the fishing business, my strained relationship with my mother, Salome, and she was honestly a little bit, I don't know if there was a term back in 90 AD, but whatever the Greek word is for helicopter mom. Salome was a little bit too aggressive with us. Then he goes on and he tells the congregation, I still miss my older brother James, who was executed in 44 AD. But I want to tell you this, I am who I am today because I met Jesus. And then John says, the greatest Thing that ever happened to me is that I knew Jesus loved me. And then the old man closes his eyes. And as you age, when you close your eyes, you kind of look up and to the left a little bit, and then you remember. Am I the only one that does that? I'll be approaching 65 in July. Isabel, can you believe that? I know I don't look it. I'm so young. That's right. Very good. But when you're old, you look back. And I imagine John looking over at Mary, Jesus' mother, whom Jesus said from the cross, John, take care of my mother. And as John looks at Mary, the mother of Jesus, he remembers how he arrived to Jesus, how he was when he met Jesus. Now, when we think of John, we think of love, the gospel of John. First John has some of the most beautiful language you will ever hear concerning love and relationships. All this stuff you hear about church, we have to love one another and care for one another and share with one another. A lot of that is lifted from John. John communicates to his church and uses terms like an elderly father saying, Sietta, like if he was talking to you, John would say, my little child, because everybody was young to John. When John met Jesus, he was quick-tempered, he was overly ambitious, he was manipulative, and he was very, very 
immature, and so was his brother. Can you imagine? In the Gospels, it says Jesus is pouring out his heart about his mission. That he is called to die on the cross for humanity. Then you know what happened? Salome and James and John saddled up to Jesus. You ever known personalities after the big meeting? Some people like to have the meeting after the meeting and kind of bend the ear of the leader. Oh, this was Salome and James and John. Salome came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, will you do me a favor? Have I got a deal for you? Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, you're going to need people to rule with you. My two sons, James should rule on the left and John on the right. Man, if you were Jesus, how would you respond to that? But Jesus said, you don't know what you're talking about. Can you drink from this cup of suffering that I'm going to have to drink from? And what did James and John say without hesitation? Oh, yes, we are. Another time, James and John were walking down a path and they saw another person doing ministry in Jesus' name. And instead of encouraging that individual, what did they do? They ran after this poor soul and tried to restrain him. Why? Because he was not part of the inner circle of disciples. And John, in a bit of humble bragging, came back to Jesus and told him the story, thinking Jesus would say, now I got somebody here that can get things done, John. Thank you for being my eyes and ears. But it didn't happen that way. Another time, Jesus and the disciples were walking to a village in Samaria. They were worn out and tired and ready to rest for the night. Someone came out from the village and said, because of the strained relationship between Samaritans and Jews, you can't stay here. You go on down the road. James and John heard this. And they turned around to Jesus and said, Lord, let us rain down fire from heaven and consume them. That was that old man who got up to speak in that church. But here's the spiritual point that I don't want you to miss. Please hear me. James and John came to Jesus just as I what? Say it with me. Just as I am. With all of their baggage, with all of their shortcomings, with all of their sins, James and John decided to leave a lucrative shipping business run by their father Zebedee, and they decided to follow Jesus just as I am. Dear ones, we really need to understand and grasp this spiritual truth. Do not wait to get yourself right before deciding to follow Jesus. Come as you are. All of your sin, all of your baggage.
my goodness, look at the personalities in Scripture from Genesis to Revelation. Who was a saint before they came to Jesus? Not many. Murderers, liars, prostitutes, manipulators, corrupt politicians, tax collectors. They all came to Jesus just as they were. But here's the difference. Is that Jesus loves John and he loves you so much that he will tell you the truth. The opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference. If you don't care about someone, you just kind of just let it slide off, whatever. But Jesus refused to do that to John. When you read the Gospels, the one apostle who is publicly rebuked and corrected is the Apostle John. John, you think you can drink from this cup, but son, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't even understand my mission. John, I know you are ambitious. John, I know you ran a successful fishing company with your father. But son, you need to understand if you want to be great, greatness is found in service. And then John began to grow. What I'm trying to say is, yes, we come to Jesus, Christian, just as I am. But we do not stay just as we were. We are called to grow in discipleship. How did this happen to John? John's life can be summed up after resurrection with two nicknames. Jesus loved giving nicknames. What was his first nickname? Do you remember? Say it out. Sons of Thunder. My goodness. Gene, I think I'm going to give you that nickname. Gene, Sons of Thunder. He went from Sons of Thunder to the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, how did that happen? Did Jesus think he was kind of funny and like a court jester, nice to have around? You know, he gets along with everybody. No. He became the disciple whom Jesus loved and he matured because he walked beside Jesus for three years and listened to his sermons, saw how Jesus handled conflict, saw how Jesus handled pain, saw how Jesus handled others in society that they were supposed to hate like Samaritans. Who was the only apostle standing at the foot of the cross? John. And as John began to mature in his faith, he became what he was as an elderly man. Now here's what you need to know about John. If you don't hear anything else, hear this. We have a treasure beyond compare in our Bible, and here's why. Is that John, as an old man, around 90 AD, toward the end of his life, writing from the wisdom of age and experience, the wisdom of having a strained relationship with a father and a mother, the wisdom of knowing what it meant 
to see your brother run through with a sword because he followed Jesus. He left us writing as an old man. Revelation. The gospel according to John. And for our purposes today. As Isabel read so beautifully. First John. Friends, I have a simple task for you before your day is out. It is very simple. I'll probably send another email to remind you. Those that are gathered here and those online. Read 1 John. Why? Because it, that is a fantastic beginning place for your discipleship. For John wrote 1 John as a sermon, not to an individual, but to the church. And friends, if you want to consider the theology of Jesus, you go to 1 John. Friends, 1 John is so rich, you can spend months applying, debating, arguing, disagreeing. But when you go through 1 John, understand you are reading the wisdom of this elderly saint. For John, as he aged, taught love, but like he was taught by Jesus, you know what he did? He told the truth. In love. Here's what he told the church. Back in 90 AD. You are. To love one another. To the extent. That Jesus did. You are. To lay down your life. For another church member. If they are persecuted by the state. Now you think to yourself, well, that, that's a little much. Now I'll just, <laughs> I'll serve on a committee. I'm not going to die for anybody. <laughs> but friends, you've got to understand, we live in times blessed beyond imagination. I can stand up here and worry about attendance. I can stand up here and worry if the sermon's boring or if it connects. But one thing I never have to worry about is that I'm going to be handcuffed and thrown in prison after a sermon. One thing you never have to worry about is that one day when you come in here, people are outside taking pictures of your license plate. Could it happen? Yeah, it could. Yeah, I'm going to go there. I really don't want to. One of the irritating things about preaching is that I, I don't want to step where I'm about to step. And this is going to upset some of you. But I have thought about this and thought about this. And it has irritated me to the point that I thought I was going to wimp out and just do an article about it or say it on Wednesday nights. I've been with you for nine years. I know, it's a long time, Danny. <laughs> if you disagree with me, you know my heart. Fair enough? I got up Easter morning, and I discovered a Twitter storm that Easter was canceled and replaced by a day honoring transgenders. Now, I'm not going where you think I'm going. And I read the comments from followers of Jesus, and I thought to myself, you are so ignorant, folly. 
falling for this trap? Are we really that sensitive? Do you know the proper response to all of that is this? Now, I don't make comments on Facebook, and I never will. Maybe, unless it's sports or children, I stay off of them. But here's what I would have said, which is pretty dumb because I wouldn't say it there. Now I'm going to say it where it's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> Philip, it's time. I think it's time for me to take the invitation. Here's what I would have said. It doesn't matter what day the government designates for anything. And if you want to push me on it, here's my answer. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That, that, that. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Good Lord, Christians, we don't have to react to everything. Sometimes it's good. And if I knew I was resigning next week, I would, I would say it differently. <laughs> Sometimes it's best for followers of Jesus to shut up and put the focus on Jesus Christ and the gospel and love. Here's what I thought. I've known transgender people that are followers of Jesus. I don't understand it. But I tell you what, if they walk into this church, they're going to be welcome. They're going to be loved. They're going to be accepted. Why? Because of John 3.16. Friends, the point is, here, here's, here's the bottom line. Before you send your email, and do it after 6 o'clock, I'm, I'm really tired. I need, I, need a, I need a break. Here's the point, folks. We have got to quit reacting to every stupid Twitter storm and whatever the argument of the day is. Keep your eye, keep your focus on Jesus Christ. And if you do that, that is the proper way to walk. Because friends, no matter how someone arrives, we are to say that God loves you. And that was the point of Jesus when he was teaching John about the Samaritans. Now let me say this. If you disagree with me, that's fine. It really is. But I want you to know, as your pastor, that has really been on my heart. And the larger issue is not an issue of sexuality. The larger issue is that Christians feeling they have to respond to whatever the world tees up. You don't have to. Let it go. Keep your focus on Jesus. Love those who are going through difficult times. My Lord, look back on your life. I'm sure it was perfect. I'm sure you've never done anything that nobody will ever know about that you're ashamed of. James and John arrived as immature, exclusive, a quick temper, manipulative, 
and he changed. Why? Because of what Isabel just read. John said, what I am telling you, dear children, I have to tell you because I've seen it with my own eye. I've heard it with my own ear. I've touched with my own hands. And Isabel will complete the sermon in how you arrive to Jesus and how you, as a Christian, can begin your own spiritual journey. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings within and fear without, oh, Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. I Say it with me. Love over fear. Love over fear. Oh, Lord. Love over fear. Love over fear. Grace, over law. Grace over law. And all God's people said with joy. Amen. Friends, let's stand and sing the beauty of the hymn of invitation and benediction. I invite you, if you would like to join this beloved community, to come forward. Those of you online, I know some are considering following Jesus. I invite you to have the courage to get a hold of me, and I will be glad to introduce you to our church family. You ready to sing? Stand up.
please be seated. I want to tell you a couple quick things before John offers our benediction. Uh, Gwen Tyson is getting test results back tomorrow, and she wanted me to pass along to you. If you receive the all-church email, you know the seriousness of what she is waiting for. So would you pray for Gwen tonight? Also, forgive me for doing this. Kaylin, you're not in trouble. I need to talk to you after the service concerning next Sunday, okay? If you could come by and see me before you go. You glad you came, you got up and come to church this morning? Yeah, I need to work on my grammar. All right, John, come and offer the benediction for us. And now, sisters and brothers, go from this place knowing that the God who made you also sustains you. The God who calls you also goes with you. The God who loved you before you were born still loves you today and into all the tomorrows. Amen. Amen. Where's Linda Ramey and Monica? Where are y'all? Come on up. Is Jane here? Come on up. Please forgive me. going to forget. Come on over here. I know you wanted me to forget, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> All right. Here's what we're doing. We need to thank those that work hard behind the scenes. These ladies, don't mutter at me. I, I, will, <laughs> I will call. These ladies prepare a wonderful fellowship for us after the service. And folks, they just don't throw it together. They take time and they take attention. So what I want to do is give you this gift on behalf of the church. I read, I read where McDonald's has a special 46 pieces of McNuggets for $12.98. Enjoy. So what I want you to do, Isabel, I'd like you to join these three. If you would come and stand by the door and let our folks greet you and thank you. Forgive me, church family, you are dismissed.